I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. For centuries, people have been growing plants hydroponically. Basically, it's a method of growing plants using nutrient solutions in water, but without soil. It's necessary in some parts of the world where there isn't any soil, or where it would be too expensive to fly fresh vegetables in. But it's also the ideal solution in situations where traditional growing methods may be unavailable. For example, in the middle of an urban metropolis like Atlanta. Now, Joe, I just don't see it. I mean, to be able to grow local, sustainable, delicate greens in the middle of nowhere, I think Matt's pulling our legs. Said it was a shipping container. We did our research. This is supposed to be the place, and here are shipping containers. Wild goose chase, brother. I don't think Hold you're right. Hold on. Found it! Whoa. Hydroponic growing methods have caught the attention of some pretty smart people over the years from rocket scientists at NASA experimenting with the idea of growing plants in space to high-tech guys like Matt Leota, intrigued with the idea of growing a lot of plants in very little space. So Matt, you're the brainchild behind this hydroponic growing system inside of a shipping container. I gotta know how this all came about because you're not even a farmer or grower by trade, are you? No, I have a high-tech background in software. <laughs> and um, after um, I had sold my last company in the telecom industry, I uh, spent a lot of time cooking for my daughter and as I went around to the grocery stores and sort of looked at where the produce was coming from, I noticed a lot of it was coming from other countries. Yeah. And it just seemed like with all of the emphasis on uh, quality and on where we're getting our food from, I was curious as to why more of it wasn't coming from right here. So I sort of researched into what it would take to become an organic farmer um, and provide local produce. So I sort of asked myself the question from a tech point of view, which is forget everything that there's known about farming and kind of start over and say, okay, if we want to have local produce, what problems do we have to solve to actually get there? And uh, this is the result of the answers to those questions. Yeah, so when we looked at it, we said, okay, if we can grow in an urban area, what do we need to do? And the problem is, you know, there's no farmland uh, in an urban area, so we need to create our own environment for growing. And what would be the optimal conditions to grow? What do we need to control? Things like temperature, humidity, CO2, et cetera, et cetera. So we came up with a, a methodology to control all of those things, and we needed some way to enclose them. So I stumbled across a shipping container as a basic building block. It provided an enclosure that was very easy for us to maintain, uh, and it's a very dense footprint that can be scaled by simply stacking one on top of another. Yeah. From the outside, the shipping container really doesn't look that big, but when you come inside here, it's amazing how many plants you actually have growing in here. How much area are we talking about? In other words, how many plants can we actually be growing in a space like this? So the shipping container itself takes up about 320 square feet and we produce the equivalent of about one acre worth of lettuce farm from here every month. And that's due in large part to the way that you've got this all stacked up. Well, there's, uh, there's several aspects that go into it. We're able to grow the plants faster than you would typically in a field. We're able to have higher yield because we don't have issues such as pests. We don't have issues such as loss to environmental issues. So all of these factors together allow us to get a lot more density than you would typically have in a, in a field. Now tell me about what you're growing in here because it appears to be different types of lettuces and only lettuce. That's right, we have actually six different varieties of lettuce that we're growing in here. We also are growing arugula. 
and we put these all together into a bag salad mix. Um, when you think about consumer acceptance, this is a different way of growing. Maybe they're a little scared of, of this. So you need something that they can look at and understand whether it's gonna be good for them. And many types of produce, it's hard to tell the quality of them without manipulating them in some way. Whereas lettuce, when you look at it, you can see the quality of it just looking at it. Uh, obviously, tasting is, a, is another good aspect, but lettuce itself is very superficial in, in your selection at, at, at a store here. And your primary customers are restaurants at this point, correct? That's correct. And you mentioned something a minute ago about taste. Describe the taste of this as opposed to conventionally purchased lettuce in a grocery store. Well, for some people, when they taste this, they, they say, you know, I don't even need dressing. Uh, it tastes that good. And you have to think about what kind of dressing's purpose was. It, oftentimes it was to hide or mask the bitter taste of some of the greens. We don't have any bitter taste to our greens, so it's a completely different experience than what people would normally have. And in fact, many of the restaurants, uh, the chefs there have learned to alter how they actually dress a salad because our greens taste so much better. The taste is like nothing you've had from traditional grocery store lettuce. This is crisp and bright yet buttery, full of flavor and definitely not bitter. Who needs dressing? <laughs> this is great. Mm. You know, wherever we travel on Growing a Greener World, we like to support restaurants that support their local growers. And that's why I'm here at 4th and Swift to bring Chef Swift this delicious bag. You recognize this? It was harvested fresh this morning from Matt's hydroponic pods. You know, I've never had a delicate green salad in the middle of winter, so I'm dying to find out what Chef Swift does for this beautiful little bag. Chef Swift. There you go, brother. Nathan, good to How see you, How are you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. How are things? Things are great. Actually, good. they're right. even better than normal. I've never had a green salad in the middle of winter that's locally grown. I would love to see what you do with those bad boys. Great. Well, we, you know, these are good for us because everybody wants a salad, you know, and it's tough to serve one in the winter when you're trying to stick to the local, to the local thing. So, Pipponics, yeah. you know, grows the stuff right around the corner. So, you know, we could take these lettuces and we make a salad out of, out of these and um, some other, uh, other winter vegetables. Okay. These have all the varietals on there. So you got some uh, some beets. What is that? There's two different types of beets. Or yeah. Well, this is, our, this is our salad special for tonight. We're going to okay. serve. We're going to serve a, a, a lettuce varietal, different lettuce varietals. Okay. Obviously, locally grown. We've got kabocha squash, which has been diced. Oh yeah. And then we blanched that, so it's still al dente. We've got some local beets that we simmered with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Okay. Um, and we have some fennel that we poached in, in a little bit of olive oil and some vanilla. That looks okay. great. Uh, toasted pistachios, and we're going to finish off with some ricotta salata cheese. Our dressing is a roasted shallot and a maple dressing. So okay. it, really, it really goes good today. It's a great wintery kind of fall winter salad. Um, it sells like crazy, and people like it. People like it a lot. So we're going to take our lettuces. Now, these lettuces are very delicate. You don't want to overwork them because they'll be bruised. You don't want to overdress them because they'll be limp. Okay. Um, but if you treat them rightly and just delicately, we add each, each of our ingredients. So then goes the squash. Squash, beets, uh -huh. vanilla poached fennel, and a couple of toasted pistachios. Okay, a little okay. bit of crunch. Yep, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of nuttiness. Um, we get a little earthiness in there from the beets. We get some nice sweet from the squash. Of course, the lettuce have a nice sweet buttery flavor to them. Okay. And again, a light texture. So we're gonna just put, for this salad, we're just gonna put about a teaspoon or so of dressing on there. That looks really good. Okay, chef. very good. And just a hint of some, some cracked, cracked black pepper. Okay. Just a little bit. A little bit of coarse salt. Tiny bit, tiny bit. Again, we're going to treat it gently so that we don't bruise or wilt these lettuces. Season from above. See that? So, so we provide us and we just kind of stack these lettuces up. This is a, uh, an aged ricotta cheese. And we're just going to put a that. couple of ribbons right on top. Just fresh shavings. Just beautiful. A couple of those. Boom, boom, boom. A little bit of creamy, umami, dairy goodness. And I'm talking my language, Chef. And then we have a nice local winter salad. Some pop on it, lettuces. I should put a little more on there because I know everybody's hungry. Watching These, you make this, I'm, I'm darn well, hungry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Thanks you so much. Man. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. You Delicious. Bet.
So the cool thing about hydroponics, you can grow plants just about anywhere, even in the heart of New York City, like Britta Riley is doing. I live in Brooklyn, New York. Lots of cement, lots of people, lots of snow, not a lot of farms. This is what I like to eat, fresh food, mostly vegetables. And this is where I get a lot of my food. I have no idea where most of it comes from, but I do know where some of my food comes from. In fact, it comes from my window. This is my window farm. It's a vertical hydroponic garden made out of water bottles, tubing, an air pump, and some hydroponic supplies. Most of this stuff I got out of the recycling bin at my apartment and at the local hardware store. Not only do I know where this food came from, I know exactly what nutrients feed the plants that I'm eating. And I grew the plants up from seed myself. The window farm works because an air pump generates a little bubble at the bottom of a tube submerged in the nutrient-rich water. The bubble carries a column of water on top of it and it rises up through the tube and spurts out the top. Then the water trickles back down through all of these bottles. She's no longer the only window farmer. In fact, in the year and a half since she launched the Window Farms Project with some friends here in New York, people are building window farms and growing their own food in the heart of cities all around the world. They've been downloading instructions that are available for free on windowfarms.org. After they build their systems, they join in a mass collaboration online. Together, we all identify issues with the window farm systems, propose solutions, and test techniques for how to best grow different kinds of plants. Whereas NASA is researching how to grow vegetables on the space station, Britta and her online community are researching how to grow food in the unlikely conditions of city windows. She calls the process of ordinary people contributing small innovations to collectively solve environmental problems R&DIY, or research and develop it yourself. Through the insights of window farmers, the designs keep evolving. Look at my first system. Wow, it was pretty janky, but it kind of worked. Then members of our online community improved stability and performance by screwing the bottles together and testing new pumps. They suggested using the more efficient air pump technique. They also solved the noise problem by making something like a gun silencer out of a vitamin bottle. Then window farmers in Finland added LED grow lights and teams in Italy, Scandinavia, Hong Kong, and Spain are translating the design for their local materials and languages. With each improvement, it's easier for the next person who joins to build a window farm. So now they have a multidisciplinary team of hackers, foodies, teachers, gardeners, all around the world, collaborating online to solve one of the biggest problems facing our environment, how to supply fresh local food to people in cities, but their solution works no matter where you live. So growing plants hydroponically is really cool, but what about doing it at home? I mean, how complicated is it? How expensive is it? Well, there's a lot of that information on the web and you can even order your parts there, but there's no better substitution than having that face-to-face -face conversation. So hopefully in your town, there's a store like that. Here in Atlanta, it's this place. Atlanta's Hydroponics has been in business for over a decade. They started small and struggled the first few years as people slowly learned what they and Gardening Without Dirt were all about. But as hydroponic gardening has taken off, so have the store's sales, with steady growth each year as more people realize that it doesn't take much green to get started in this kind of green growing. So growing plants hydroponically really comes down to just a few basic steps. And it's really easy, especially when you have somebody like David here to show us how to get started. So It'll David, my pleasure. I know that lights are important, of course. Absolutely. Tell me about this one. Sure, here we have a 150 watt high pressure sodium light, which is really efficient and is gonna help the plants grow very vigorously. The nice thing is it's low on your electric bill at only 150 watts, so it's about leaving two light bulbs on in your home. Tell me about this tent right here that surrounds sure. it. Sure. The tent here is going to do a couple of key factors. It's going to control your environment for temperature and humidity, ideally making it suited for your plants and their growing. Also, it's going to protect your floor and reflect the light from uh, the, the lighting system here onto your plants, increasing their light availability. 
And it's also very convenient that if you do happen to be watching TV or something in the same room where you have your garden indoors, <laughs> you just zip it up and it's completely light proof. Okay, so about how much is this setup right here for this tent? This tent is going to run you about $150. Well, I am on a budget, so I'll come back and get this later, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Well, I haven't gotten very far, and I can already see where I can spend a lot of money. But being budget-minded, if I wanted to get a complete system with as little as possible, how much am I going to be spending? You're going to spend about $64 or so sans the light. So that's the self-contained kit then, right? That's right. Now, if you're the do-it-yourselfer kind of person, you can find everything you need for about $20 at your local hardware store. So we're talking the basic five-gallon bucket. That's right. And then these components, a plastic ring, some uh, tubing that you would get at a pet store or hardware store, and, and the pump at the pet store. That's all you'll need. Awesome. So if you are the do-it-yourself kind of guy and you want to make this kit for just a few bucks, guess what? We have all the instructions for that right on our website at growingagreenerworld.com. It'll be waiting for you right there. And then the only other thing we need is the media for this bucket. And we have a lot of options for that. Right here we have an assortment of different hydroponic grow media, but the thing they all have in common is that they're inert. They're not going to supply any nutrients to your plant as it grows. What you're holding there, Joe, is called rock wool, and it's a fibrous volcanic rock, but it's going to hold an ideal amount of oxygen even when fully saturated. That's important. Now another option we have here is a recycled plastic bottle turned into a fiber similar to cotton. And I love the green F effect of this, but at the same time, it's also a really fantastic hydroponic grow media holding, again, the moisture and food at the same time that it delivers the water. Yep. I recognize this. This is core basically from coconut, inside that's of a coconut. That's right. All it is is a coconut husk that's been ground up and then let sit so the salt goes away. And it's a very friendly, environmentally renewable grow media. Now another option you have as a hydroponic grower, and a very popular one at that, is called LECA, which stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. But it's a superheated clay ball that is extremely porous. And if you look closely at the particles that's broken apart, yep. you'll see a lot of the little air cavities which hold that air that's so vital to growing a healthy plant root. Yeah, and that's what you actually have inside of this kit right here. That's right. And this is what you use to actually start your seeds or your little seedlings. That's right. That's a peat-based plug that's held together with an organic glue. It has uh, a, just a wonderful capability to really get those seeds started and growing vigorously. And you've got some examples over here. Obviously, that was started from seed. All of this was started from seed. You can see the different types of plants grow at different speeds. But all of them are ready just to be pulled up and planted in any hydroponic system you make or buy. I've got my eye on this basil right here. First of all, it looks fantastic. And secondly, I can hand this off to Nathan and once it gets bigger and we can cook with this. So I just put this in here. You just make a little cavity and put the little plug in, fill in around it, and that's gonna stabilize your plant. And as you can see, the water's already delivering food for it and you'll be having pesto in no time. Just give it a light source. That's all you'll need. And pay for it. <laughs> awesome. I know, I can't wait. We hope today's episode inspired you to try and grow your own food hydroponically, no matter where you live. Or no matter the season. You know, if you want to watch this episode or any of our other episodes, just go to our website, which is the same as our name, mm -hmm. growingagreenerworld.com. Plus, we'll have some great information and links on growing food hydroponically there as well, too. And we'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World. Now? Now. Enjoy. <laughs>